Hang on to your butts. All right, here we go. We're about to go through some of the worst turbulence you could possibly go through. We're punching through the dirty side of Hurricane Florence in the Hurricane Hunter. You can already see us bouncing and bumping around. This is the crew of the U.S. Air Force's Hurricane Hunter flying through Hurricane Florence as it barrels toward the U.S. They're tasked with collecting the most up-to-date data from inside the monster storm. The information will help government agencies, businesses, and residents make critical decisions on the ground. WSJ joined the crew for the bumpy ride. The 11-hour journey starts here. The plane, a Lockheed WC-130J Hercules, is equipped with special sensors that detect specific information about storms that satellite imagery, storm modeling, and other technologies can't pick up. The crew is made up of Air Force Reserves and members of the U.S. Coast Guard and Navy. They prepare for the flight and plot out a route before taking off at 3 a.m. About two minutes to the bumps. That looked pretty good. The first few hours of the flight were dark and calm. During this time, the crew monitored for developments and prepared for the storm ahead. As the morning sun broke through the clouds, the crew readied for the first pass through the storm's wall. To collect the data, the mission's loadmaster deploys a series of these cardboard wrap capsules called the drop sond. This is my station here, the drop sond station. My primary job is to drop the weather instruments that give us a vertical profile from flight level all the way down to the sea surface of what that storm looks like. This is the actual drop sign we drop through the launch tube. This picks up wind direction, wind speed, temperature, relative humidity, as well as barometric pressure. I press a launch button on my computer and it opens up a valve through the belly of the plane. Big hitters are eye wall, eye, eye wall going out. Before any of the data on board is sent back to land, it's checked and adjusted by the onboard weather officer. All the aircraft data is funneling into my computer here, and so my job is to control, uh, quality control and check it to make sure it's, uh, it's accurate, as well as the drop signs that the loadmaster is releasing. That data comes to my computer as well. Um, so I'm kind of packaging all the data, and then I send it to the Hurricane Center via satellite real time so they can know what's going on currently. Today we dropped about uh, 12 drop sons or so, um, and that's pretty average, I would say. On this mission, the plane traveled roughly 1,000 miles from the coast to reach the storm before passing through the eye wall multiple times. This one started off a little smoother on the first pass than, than some, and then it was rougher, I think, on the, on the second one. The airplane itself is a, is a data recording platform the whole way through. It's getting a whole lot of data and then sending that to the National Hurricane Center, who then plugs it into those models. You know, you see the spaghetti models that uh, supercomputers run. As you probably saw earlier as we're entering the storm environment, you've got a wind coming from the side and you're able to crab into it. And kind of, you know, the up and down bumps that we got, you're kind of riding along and flowing with it. Whereas when you're on the ground, the wind really beats you up a lot more. The data collected on Tuesday's flight prompted National Hurricane Center forecasters to increase their estimate of Florence's wind speeds in an update less than two hours later. The Hurricane Hunters, based out of Biloxi, Mississippi, have been flying into Florence since Monday. We fly around the clock, so once one of these kicks off, we're flying 24-7 for probably five to seven days at a time until the storm makes landfall. For the crew on board, the three-hour flight back to base is a time to relax knowing that the work they do is making a difference. What's important to me is that we're improving the forecast by 30%. We're narrowing that cone of expectancy of where it's going to make landfall. And uh, the important part is, is that people know when to evacuate.